Welcome back, beautiful people. You're listening to A Moment of Zen right here on 710 WOR, the voice of New York. I'm your host, Zen Sams. Welcome back to My Digital World, brought to you by Tempest, a Burkan World Project. Today, we're chatting all things data and the fundamentals of data sovereignty in the age of the metaverse. At this point, we've almost certainly heard of the metaverse. It started when Mark Zuckerberg announced the rebranding of Facebook into Meta. So what is the metaverse? Well, it's not something invented by Facebook, Google, or any other company. Metaverse is a name coined by the sci-fi author Neil Stevenson when he wrote his cyberpunk novel, Snow Crash, way back in 1992. At that time, he presented the world where people could interact through their avatars or interact with other intelligent beings. Conversations around the metaverse are gaining in popularity, likely because big tech, including companies like Microsoft and Facebook, are acting like it's time to go all in, signaling that the metaverse might be the next big thing after all. Definitions are still evolving as to what it really is, but mainly it refers to a convergence of physical, augmented, and virtual reality in a shared online space or the universe of data. Like with our real universe, humanity is still in the dark about most of its secrets, and we are at the brink of exploring it. Augmented reality or virtual reality are just the first glimpses we are seeing. Now, to effectively trade within the metaverse, digital currencies come into play, like Bitcoin or Ethereum. This is a fast evolving industry and new currencies are always being introduced. The result will be a digital artifact created in the metaverse that's protected and sold using the advancements made in blockchain and NFTs. This means the metaverse will have the option to build an economy on par with the one in the physical world. Having a digital currency that can cross the boundaries between our world and the metaverse will undoubtedly raise the stakes and spark all kinds of new ventures. Here to break it all down is my returning contributor from my digital world, CEO and founder of Tempest Network, Shahal Khan, joined by his good friend, Robert Edward Grant. Robert is a successful entrepreneur, best-selling author of Philomath, a prolific inventor and founder of several corporate enterprises. Most recently, during the past decade, Robert has turned his attention toward number theory, mathematical physics, geometry, cryptography, and even blockchain cryptocurrencies. He is a very strong advocate of data sovereignty for the original producers, meaning the individuals of digital assets. His book, Beautiful Minds Are Free From Fear, has been a source of inspiration to millions of people around the world. Welcome to the show, gentlemen. Hi. Great to be Thank here. You, Robert, you. you absolutely, you are quite an impressive individual, Robert. I'm going to start with you. Now, what will make or break the, the metaverse will be its ability to capture data from its surroundings. And the only way to do that will be by mass ingestion of the incoming data. Only with this data will we be able to create a rich and meaningful environment. Now, the next need after seeing will be interacting, meaning that the data not only needs to be represented in a meaningful way, but also must be responsive. Now, what types of innovations do you foresee being implemented to cater to data responsiveness in the metaverse? Well, first of all, I think I think as a core principle of the metaverse and, and other things that are going to be called similarly to the metaverse, you know, this is really this combination, as you mentioned, of AR, augmented reality, extended reality, sometimes referred to as XR as well as MR, mixed reality. And all of these are gonna to converge together and identify that data is the most valuable asset today. It already is. It's, it's more valuable than oil, it's more valuable than anything else. So those things that will allow the consumer to be able to claim, protect and control and monetize their own data are going to be those things that are gonna advance the most rapidly, we believe. And so we've actually built an architecture around this that allows people to be able to claim, protect, control and monetize their own data. And first and foremost, people don't even realize that data is so valuable. I mean, I'm writing a book right now with a co-author named Michael Ashley that's called Digital Plantation. And Digital Plantation is of course a reference to all of us being slaves and we don't even know it. We're basically creating data. And for the first time in human history, human beings are creating value without actually having to toil. We're just doing it through our own behaviors. And that's going to be the next currency for the rest of this 21st century, we strongly believe. So all these mechanisms to go into creation of a monetary system that will be allowable and be able to be traded to benefit original producers 
are going to be those things that we at Crown Sterling are focused on, as well as the other companies that are going to be very successful are going to be focused in that direction as well. Brilliant, brilliant, fascinating stuff. Now on Shahal, I'm going to, I'm going to throw this one to you. On the lowest level equal to physiological needs of humans in the real world, one can imagine the needs of a digital infrastructure in the metaverse. Tools for ingestion of and access to data and the infrastructure to store it, analyze it, and even enrich it. But just like in the real world, before any meaningful interactions can be achieved, security needs to be guaranteed. What kind of security can blockchain provide in the metaverse to secure this data? Well, you know, uh, honestly, I think uh, I'm going to be very quick with this one because I think Robert really should talk about this because Robert uh, worked on and has invented an amazing uh, time-based uh, security, um, uh, uh, essentially, platform that can really um, uh, trace and, and protect in real time a lot of the data. And, and that leads to then the data sovereignty being recognized and protected and tied to the individual and, and identity. So, um, you know, there's a, a new mechanisms that need to tie into identity and need to do this in real time and then be able to tag that data um, in order uh, for a person to be able to rightfully own that identity. But I'm going to, um, you know, let Robert uh, tune in because he's really done something amazing in that area. Absolutely. Take it, Robert. Provides an opportunity to be able to create this ledger. And, and some people may not even know what blockchain necessarily is. First of all, a lot of people think blockchain is encryption. It's not encryption, it is encrypted. But it's, it's, a, it's a distributed ledger that creates a historical reference on everything that you want to capture related to that particular blockchain. So for example, if you buy a, a Louis Vuitton bag in the future, right, there will be an RFID chip associated with it that will prove to you that it's not fake. It'll prove to you where it was uh, first, the sourcing of it was made. So where did the raw materials come from? Who are the people that actually created it? Who are the people that inspected it? The quality control, all of that will be housed in a blockchain. It's like in the old days, knights used to uh, go around on their horses carrying patents, right? These patents would tell what their lineage was and who, they, who, were, they, who were they coming from, who their father was, who their grandfather was, what are their, you know, their titles, right? What are their lands associated with it? So. This is gonna be kind of the way that data is tracked because data is the most valuable. So making sure that integrity of data is there and ownership of that data is gonna be critically important. So what we did and what Shahal was referring to was we created something that made the world's most perfect secret security, right? So the highest level of secrecy is in, found in an encryption called one-time pad encryption. It's been around for a long time. It's quantum resistant. However, it is not practical up until now. It hasn't been practical, practical to be used on either a blockchain or in you know, digital communications because the keys have to be very, very long. We innovated a way to make that uh, practical and be used on blockchain as well as to be able to have it be used to secure your data and associate with our own multi-factor authentication system as well and to blockchain all of it for your benefit so that all your data can be put into an NFT. And that NFT then can be taken to market and you can monetize it. Now the market today is estimated to be about two and a half trillion dollars. Just the brokerage side of it alone is almost $300 billion and growing about 100% per year for the last several years. We intend for the original producers to be able to NFT their own data and take that to market along with anything else that they want to produce and create. I think one of the greatest and most exciting aspects of this is that the 20th century has really been about intermediaries making money. I think the 21st century is going to be more about the creators, the innovators, the musicians, the artists actually being able to monetize in a liquid barter system all of their work and their effort for the first time in hundreds of years. We, we may not be hearing the term starving artist so much anymore. Absolutely. Yeah, no, this is this is great stuff. I mean, you have such a you have such an ability to tie it all together. And when you when you're when that perfect example about that Louis bag really hits close to home because that helps um, a lot of industries, because now not only are you tracking and are you keeping tabs on on the, the materials, but it is also mitigating a lot of that, you know, uh, fraud. It's mitigating a lot of uh, these fashion companies that are um, at the tail end of, you know, the knockoffs kind of coming into play and they're losing money. So this is great because it's tying into every, every aspect. Um, I definitely want to hear, hear from Shahal. Um, and this is more uh, specifically 
about with all the attention um, on the exciting possibilities of the metaverse, one could forget what infrastructures will really be needed for the heavy lifting. And it would definitely have to be optimized for transferring and storing data to make the metaverse more attractive. Not only would, would historical data need to be available to facilitate context and depth in any interaction, but it would also have to be highly accurate. And I know, Robert, you're all about math and accuracy. And Shahal, this means the need for real-time data ingestion and data ingestion and analytics is paramount. How do you believe this is going to be achieved in the metaverse? specifically um, with what the, with what Tempest is doing, essentially? Well, Zen, you know, at the end of the day, uh, we have to um, have platforms that are uh, above whatever um, platforms are absorbing the data today. So um, let's just say that, um, because I know we're a little short on time, and just, just to make it quick, platforms like, for example, the data sovereignty platform, the security platform, that Robert's created, um, which reside on a, uh, a, a massive cloud-based system now that scoops up that data, tags that data, identifies the uh, user and identity, and is able to go backwards and create ledgers based on that identity. And then there are other new systems that will be able to, um, uh, let's say, uh, maintain, monitor, and put tags on that identity in terms of real value. That could be then tied to a economic system where people are not trapped within this slavery of like this pyramid where uh, you know the top corporations, for example, are taking 95% of the value of their data and they're left uh, not either knowing what they own or what it's valued at and what it's worth. And for that to happen, you have to disintermediate the current systems that are collecting the data uh, on their OTT platforms and have people come in directly through communities and be able to, number one, log in through systems where they're able to tag it with their system, uh, which is able to collate and give their identity verification, verify and house their data. So there's going to be very, uh, I, I think, decentralized systems, but uh, they're going to have to kind of collate onto a, um, a system like uh, Robert's invented, which can essentially give their identity tags um, and their data tags first and foremost. Fascinating stuff. I mean, the, between between the two of you, you have a good grip on where this is headed. And Robert, your insight is is priceless. I mean, I loved talking to you. Definitely a highlight of my day. Thank you very much. And thanks for the invitation again. Absolutely. Thank you both for coming on, Shahal. Always a pleasure to have you on. All right. Thank you, Sam. Guys, Thank that you. was Shahal Khan. And he is Tempest Network, CEO, founder of Tempest Network. You guys have to check them out, tempest.network. And Robert Edward Grant.com. Definitely check out his website. Innovator, visionary, mathematician, all of the good stuff above. You're listening to A Moment of Zen right here on 710 WR, the voice of New York. We'll be right back after this.